In this short video, I'm going to show you how to open up your NinjaTrader 8 platform and open up a blank chart to look for trading opportunities. To begin, once you have double clicked your NinjaTrader 8 icon on your desktop, you will notice that the NinjaTrader 8 control center has loaded. On the screen, you're going to notice new tools, workspaces, connections, and help. At the very bottom, you will notice several tabs such as orders, executions, strategies, positions, and accounts. In order to open up your very first chart, all you will have to do is go to the top toolbar and select new and left click chart. Once you have selected chart, a new window will appear that says data series. In this data series window, you will see instrument and from there a drop down panel. This is where you can choose the symbol that you would like to look for trading opportunities with. If you would like to look for futures, one of the very first starting points is by going down to the futures tab and locating the symbol of your choosing. If you already know what symbol you're looking to do, you can start typing it in. For example, if you would like to do the S&P 500, type in ES and then select future to help filter out some of the non-futures related symbols. Once you have done this, you will see ES and then the asset class, which is future, and then the descriptor. For this example, this would be the E-mini S&P 500 futures contract. At the very bottom, if you would like to utilize the micro E-mini contract, all you'd have to do is select MES, which for this example in the descriptor will say micro E-mini S&P 500 futures. For this example, we will select the micro E-mini S&P 500 futures by double clicking. And once it is fully loaded under applied, you will see the symbol along with the expiration date and then the type of chart. Now on the right hand side, you will see data series listed. And with most of this information, this is user customizable. For example, I like to leave price based on set to last, type set to minute. And then from there, if I wanna choose anything less than five minutes, I can change the value to whatever I would like to choose. Because of this example, I would like it to be a five minute chart. I will set the value to five minute. However, if you would like to change this to something like a daily chart, you can set this up by selecting type and selecting whichever type you would like to utilize. For this, I'm gonna go back to minute and leave it set to five. You could also load on a certain amount of days, bars, or custom amount of time per chart. Keep in mind, the more data that you have loaded per chart, the more resource heavy this will be. I like to leave this set to five days because I'm on such a small time frame. From there, you could also select any sort of trading hours that you would like to have located. I typically leave this set to the default, which is use instrument settings. Break it into day, I like to have checked. Below this, an individual can choose the chart style. I like to leave this set to the Japanese candlestick. You could also as well change the bar width for the display on how it will look on the chart. You can change the candle body outline, the candle wicks, and all you have to do is select the carrot to the left-hand side to make any adjustments. You could also as well change the different colors for bullish or bearish candles. In this example for the bearish candles, I wanna leave this set to crimson, and for bullish candlesticks, I would like that set to C green. After that, there's a couple other settings one can utilize, such as visual, if you'd like to do auto scale, center the price on scale, I typically leave that one unchecked. Display on data box, I like to leave that checked. And then label will be whatever the chart that I'm having loaded, displayed up on the top left-hand side. Panel, I leave set to one. Price marker, which is going to be the current market price on the price line. I normally leave that colored black. And then I put that on the right hand side of the chart. Below that will be any executed trades below this. And then also as well, markers. If you would like to have 
text with the markers, you can select that. And if you do not wish to have anything plotted on there for executions, whether you enter or exit, you can select do not plot. I typically leave this set to either markers only or text and marker. Once everything is selected to my defined setup, I will select OK and load my first chart. Once I do this, I will expand the chart so it takes up the entirety of the screen by selecting this middle icon on the top right hand side of the window. Now you will see that I have my candlesticks displayed to the chart. And then I also have on the right hand side my chart trader loaded. When you initialize your Ninja Trader, this will not be here. This is what it will appear as. So, in order to get the buy and sell symbols on your chart, all you have to do is go to the top of the toolbar and navigate to this section here that says Chart Trader. Once you have clicked that, select Chart Trader, and now you will see several options appear on the right hand side. Some of these options include Buy Market sell market, buy ask, sell ask, buy bid, sell bid, reverse position, and then close the trade. Below that, we'll give you some information relating to any open positions you are in. Right now, you can see that this is flat, meaning there are no active positions. If one were to be in a position, you would actually see the current position if it was in the profit or in negative. Also as well, it would show you how many contracts you're entered into and also the direction. And then below that will also give you how many points you're profitable or negative, as well as dollar amount, tick amount, percentage amount, or pip amount. For that, I typically leave that set to either the dollar amount or the tick amount. And in order to change that, all you have to do is left click once you're in a position, over that black box that says PL, left click it until you get your desired display. Below that, we'll have the instrument that you're looking to trade on, the time and force. For this, you can select day, good till cancel, or good till date. If I'm doing intraday, I typically leave that to day. And if I'm actually holding this overnight and holding it various trading sessions, then that's when I will select good till cancel. For this example, I will leave it set to day. Below that, we'll have my account. From there, that's where I can determine from the drop down box which account I would like this to be going to. To the right of that, we'll say order quantity, and that will give the user the ability to change the amount of contracts they would like to be entered into. For this example, I will leave this set to one, but you can just use these arrows to determine however many contracts you would like to be entered into. Below that will be your advanced trade management settings, which is where you can define any stops or limits attached to this trade. I will leave this set to none for the current example. After that, if one would like to do some drawings, you can go to the top of the toolbar and select the pencil, which is also known as the drawing tool. From here, you will see a lot of the different tools that can be utilized when looking for trades and conducting technical research. If I would like to use this line tool to help determine a trend line, I can select it and then to draw, all I have to do is left click on the chart and then put it where I would like to and left click again to anchor this line to the chart. If I would like to zoom in and out, all I have to do is left click and drag my mouse either horizontal for the price or vertical for the time. If I would like to shrink this chart down, all I have to do is left click on the price line and drag my mouse either up or down. If I would like to zoom in on the price, I left click my mouse down here at the time and either go to the left or to the right to expand or contract the chart. If, for example, I look at this chart and say, man, this looks beautiful for a buy setup and I would like to place a buy trade, all one has to do is once that determination is made, go over to this chart trade panel, make sure your settings are to your liking, and if you wish to be entered into immediately, if you want to buy the market, you hit 
buy market. Order filled. As you see, I have now been entered into a trade. If I would like to close out of my trade at any time, all I have to do is hit that close button and then I will be exited out of that particular trade position. Order filled. If I would like to sell this trade opportunity, all I have to do is click sell market. Order filled. And now I'm entered into a sell position. If I would like to close this position, all I have to do is select the close button below. Order filled. And now I'm exited out of the trade. If at any point I wanna see how this trade played out and also as well see if I'm still active in any trades, all I have to do is go back down to the taskbar on Windows, hover my mouse over the NinjaTrader icon and go to the control center. Once I'm at the control center, I can take my mouse and navigate it over to any positions by clicking the positions tab. As you see, this is completely blank, meaning I have no active positions. If I would like to see how my account is doing, all I have to do is click the accounts tab and it will show me how much either profit I've made or how much loss I've accrued by looking at that total profit and loss. Once again, there's a lot of flexibility that you can utilize with the NinjaTrader platform, and there will be several more videos explaining in detail what many of the components are, but this video it should give a good guide to give you an idea of how to open up a chart, select a symbol, as well as a time frame of your choosing, and then enter into and exit out of a trade.